That's what makes them stronger, you know, and that's one of the reasons powerlifters have sometimes bad health. They don't take necessarily as many kinds of drugs. They don't take growth hormone usually. They don't take these kind of things, but they, for them to be strong, they basically need to have bad, uh, high blood pressure. They need to be hypertensive to be at their peak. <music> Hello friends, welcome to week 9's Q&A's, joined by my lovely wife Lucy. Hello. Lucy will continue asking me some of your questions from Instagram. So next one is by Dark Custom Harley. He asks, uh, beta blockers versus um, calcium channel blockers for blood pressure control, and which should be preferred in terms of physical performance? Thank you, Lucy. Uh, yeah, so let me answer your question, Dark uh, Custom Har Harley, by saying first of all that I'm not a doctor and I don't recommend to people what medications to take broadly, but um, in general, people do not, educationally, people do not respond to the different blood pressure medications in the same way. This is because of genetic uh, differences that are found in genes like the angiotensin receptor gene, many other genes that are involved. Uh, for my genetic analysis clients, uh, my blood pressure section is over, I think it's two pages or more. Um, and there's a variety of polymorphisms that affect how your blood pressure rises, why it rises, like nit nitric oxide genes, angiotensin, those are some major ones. And there are some polymorphisms that have been found to part be particularly relevant to which medication you respond to. So for example, there are multiple, multiple polymorphisms that affect whether you respond well to calcium channel blockers, which is what he's asking about. There are other, um, and when I say respond well, I mean how much your blood pressure will drop from a dose of calcium channel blockers. Mm -hmm. And there are other polymorphisms that specifically uh, very strongly relate to how much your blood pressure will drop from a beta blocker. A beta blocker is an adrenaline blocker. It blocks uh, adrenaline receptor activity. So uh, what I wanted, so basically it, it depends on the person and it depends on your genetics. And you can try this out by uh, going to a doctor and getting a prescription for one, trying it, seeing how you respond to a certain dose so for example, you could try a calcium channel blocker, which is the older kind of medication, by the way. Uh, you could try an ACE inhibitor, also older me medication. Then you could try one of the newer medications, which is ang angiotensin receptor blocker, which is what I use personally. Actually, to be honest with you, my blood pressure is so low now that I can't really take it anymore. But I always, I check my blood pressure every day just in case. But um, then you could try the angiotensin receptor blocker. And then you could try, uh, and you have to try these by themselves to know how they affect you. And basically you want to look at, this is not medical advice, but you want to look at the, uh, the range of prescription, of the uh, uh, dosages that are prescribed. And then at each, like you want to see like a low, low, a low dose, which one do you respond best to mm -hmm. in terms of your blood pressure dropping? Now, in general, uh, I will say one thing, um, a beta blocker will always harm your athletic performance more than anything else. And in general, Beta blockers are only prescribed to people for blood pressure by themselves if the person has a psychologically caused uh, blood pressure rises. I see. Only, which is almost, by the way, not possible. If you, if you're, if you are, um, if you have basically overactive uh, adrenaline response in your brain, which causes your sympathetic nervous tone to constrict and activate, as your blood vessels constrict from that, you won't. They won't constrict to the point that you have clinically high blood pressure. You're hypertensive. Mm -hmm. You'll still be normotensive unless you have problems in your genes. So uh, like nitric oxide, for example, if you don't have good nitric oxide uh, production or your use of nitric oxide is not good, mm -hmm. um, your endothelial lining of your blood vessel walls will remain constricted because it's nitric oxide that makes those endothelial linings relax. Right, so for example, I have problems with the nit nitric oxide gene. So you will have specific problems. Uh, and uh, beta blocker cannot be a sing. I mean, it is sometimes prescribed, but it really can't be unless you just had a stress related blood pressure issue, which in which case, as I'm saying, you have more issues. But let me tell you that the blood, the beta blocker, even though I'm very fond of beta blockers, I like them. They have some uh, issues with it because obviously adrenaline is very important in the body. But in terms of athletic performance, adrenaline is one of the most powerful performance enhancing hormones in the body. Ad adrenaline and noradrenaline si significantly affect your athletic performance. If you take a beta blocker, you will be less strong, 
which will cause you, if you're a bodybuilder, you will make less gains over time. You, if you're a competitive uh, athlete, like I was an arm wrestler, you'll be slower, you'll be weaker. Um, there's arm wrestling because of my <laughs> natural movement. You'll be slower, you'll be weaker, it'll affect you more. Now, the other thing I should mention, in general, and if you're one of my genetic analysis clients, you'll have noticed this in your report, which is that um, the, the genes that relate to blood pressure also often relate to athletic performance. In the same gene, you'll, I, I don't make an uh, independent section for athletic performance anymore, but you'll see that I'll mention, uh, you know, this is correlated to high blood pressure, but also correlated to better strength or better athletic performance or whatever. They usually seem to come together. And th there's a reason for that. It's just a physiological reason. When, you're, when your uh, blood vessels are constricted better, your body performs at a faster, uh, at a more effective rate. Mm. Uh, than if they're loose and dilated and everything's not tense. Which is one of the reasons, for example, when you see a power lifter lift, um, they take these salts, they snort these salts right before. Well, what is the salt doing? That's increasing the blood pressure, constricting all the vascular structure, raising the sympathetic nervous tone and allowing them to be stronger. So for example, my close powerlifting, uh, powerlifting friends do that almost for fun. They do it all day, they love that stuff. And, and that's what makes them stronger, you know? And that's one of the reasons powerlifters have sometimes bad health. They don't take necessarily as many kinds of drugs. They don't take growth hormone usually. They don't take these kind of things. But they, for them to be strong, they basically need to have bad, uh, high blood pressure. They need to be hypertensive to be at their peak level mm -hmm. of strength. And so overall, this caused the heart to work much more. They're, you know, for example, think about it this way. The drugs that make people strong directly also raise blood pressure the most. T uh, trembolone, how does it make people strong immediately? It does it immediately. If you take trembolone acetate, four days later, you're very strong. Why? Because of the sympathetic nervous tone, adrenaline, the blood vessels closing mm -hmm. down. Uh, same thing happens with uh, halotestin. Uh, if you take testosterone suspension at high doses, which is what I used to do to get strong, um, you you'll immediately have an effect on the blood pressure. Um, Anadrol will spike your blood pressure really high. So think about it that way. Basically, Athletic, true athletic performance, especially in terms of strength, comes along with higher blood pressure. When you, when you lower your blood pressure, your athletic performance goes down. But if you use a beta blocker, it'll go down even more than your blood pressure actually goes down. So probably the beta blocker is the worst one to use. I see. And um, would you recommend any like particular nutritional regimen to lower your blood pressure while keeping your athletic performance? Well, you know, this is the thing. As I'm saying, like, the truth is that when you lower your blood pressure, your athletic performance will be worse. Okay. However, there is one thing to keep in mind. If you do my, not my, but if you do what I recommend, the periodic fasts, you're, you will lo lower your blood pressure, not just during the fast, but overall. Mm. And this seems to have an effect. This seems to come from the rejuvenating effect of the periodic fast. You know, as I mentioned before, guys, the periodic fast causes stem cell proliferation in your body. These are new baby cells that don't have damage to their DNA. While it proliferates these new baby stem cells, it also goes, the fast causes your body to scavenge, to do apoptosis, which is kill cells that are damaged, that have mm -hmm. DNA that's damaged in them. As you live, as your cells replicate, they, they accumulate DNA damage. Every, every day you accumulate uh, millions of damaged uh, DNA cells. And these are the cells, by the way, that eventually cause cancers mm -hmm. and things like that. Your body's supposed to get rid of those. When you're fasting, your body goes on a, on a like a five day fast, your body goes on a, a rampage killing these different cells. At the same time though, your body also because of growth hormone, and not only growth hormone guys, so don't think I just take some growth hormone will work, but your, your body will also accumulate new baby cells, stem cells that are fresh, that have perfect DNA, that there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with them. So you're basically fixing damage to your body. So think of it this way, you probably didn't have blood pressure when you were 18 years old, high blood pressure. Most people get hypertensive, they're normotensive when they're young. They get hypertensive when they're in their 30s and their 40s. So these five day fasts, I've seen in myself and others, if you do like three or four of them, you may find that you overall your blood pressure has declined. And this is a nice kind of decline of blood pressure. It's not like, it's a decline that comes from being more healthy. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would look at more. Now there are things that can lower your blood pressure naturally, which I've mentioned before. Like for example, garlic is one of the most powerful things for that. Um, in fact, the, I made a video on coca powder. Coca powder, one of the biggest uh, effects is seen is on blood pressure. There are other things that, that can do that too. Having a very good diet with, with these phytochemicals that come from garlic, come from coca, come from a variety of sources, which I mention often, uh, that cause a hormetic uh, stress in the body. 
these uh, phytochemicals will lower your blood pressure long term. So if you change your diet from having a, let, let, I'm not saying a carb heavy diet because that has its own problems with blood pressure, but say you change your diet from just the standard American diet in general and move in these phytochemicals, you will notice your blood pressure will decline. But if you do these periodic fasts, not only during this fast your blood pressure will decline, but if you do, say you do one every month for four months, I bet you after four months, you might be norm intensive. So for example, you might, like I lost 70 pounds, you know, mostly muscle. I mean, to be honest with you, I had the same body fat now as I did when I was uh, 230 or so, and or at least 220. No, actually, probably, I, I honestly may have had better body fat. And I lost 70 pounds, and my blood pressure didn't decline that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it declined from like, I don't know what it was, because I was on the medication, but it declined on the medication by about 10 in, uh, in systolic. Um, but once I started doing f more frequent fasts, because I was doing, I started originally doing fasts every quarter. When I started doing the fast more frequently, my blood pressure declined to the point that recently I've not been able to take the medication anymore because I'm, I'm, I'm on the verge of being, uh, having low, clinically low blood pressure, which is by the way, also dangerous for your kidneys. So anyway, this is some thoughts on it. I hope this helps. I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. And I wish you guys a great day. Thank you. See you Thank later. You. Thank you.